Hello everyone, welcome to the video. In this video, we'll be talking about .NET. So I've been posting a lot of F-sharp tutorials for now and it's been going great, but uh, a feedback I often get from viewers is that I assume prior knowledge of .NET. And so it's very difficult for newcomers to any language, but like F-sharp or C-sharp, and they come to the language and not only do they have to learn the language itself, but this whole environment around them, it's, it's, it can get quite confusing. And so in this video, I'll rectify that and I want to introduce everyone to .NET, assuming no prior knowledge of what it is. And so what is it? So taken from the Microsoft website, it is <clears throat> .NET is an open source developer platform created by Microsoft for building many different types of applications. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. No, no, like really, when you say that, you know, what's a developer platform? It can be, it's still very nebulous. So we have to dig deeper in to define what's a developer, developer platform, what does .NET comprise, and why do you care? So we'll jump into that. So .NET can, de can be defined as it's a few languages, so like three main languages and their compilers, so F-sharp, C-sharp, and VB.NET. It is comprised of build utilities to build uh, that code, right? So you have MS build packed in. You have runtimes to run whatever those previous compilers have compiled. So these are runtimes. You have a bunch of libraries for common, commonly needed stuff like uh, file paths and directories and HTTP and whatever, you can name it, like there's a bunch of libraries. There's a package manager called NuGet, so it'll help you manage your packages, grab new packages, pack your own packages onto a NuGet feed, so that is NuGet. And lastly, there's a convenient command line interface to use all these operations. So this is how I would define .NET, is a package of a whole bunch of stuff, and all of this is you can get access to it by downloading the .NET SDK. So a SDK or a software development kit is something you install or you download, install, and you automatically get access to all these things. So if you do download the .NET SDK, you can now start writing, uh, writing F Sharp, writing C Sharp, writing VB.NET, and you can start compiling it and all these stuff. So it is very comparable to uh, when you, if you write Java, uh, you need to download the JDK or the Java development kit. And also it, it normally comes with a JRE, which is a Java runtime environment. Uh, it's a, kind of the same concept. So historically, C Sharp has been the most adopted .NET language. And even in the past, when you say, you know, people look for .NET developers, they kind of are saying we're looking for C Sharp developers and they conflate .NET and C Sharp because you know, F Sharp is the long lost child, even though it's like born in like 2005 or something, it's still a long lost child and uh, people automatically you know .NET is C Sharp, but .NET is a few languages. F Sharp, if you don't know about it, is a functional first programming language, it is a cross-platform open source. You have access to all the .NET ecosystem, like I previously mentioned, and uh, you know, you have great things like uh, uh, immunity by default, type inference, you have an algebraic type system, you have a lot of stuff. So if you're interested, you can check out my channel. My channel is fully dedicated to learning F-sharp. If, if you want to write a C-sharp, that, that's fine. This video will still apply to you. So how is .NET software structured, right? So we have languages to write code, but it's important to, to see how it's structured. So basically in .NET, you have projects. And these projects generate either DLLs or .exes. So a console application is a type of project that when compiled generates an executable. And this .exe, and you, you, it's the you know, classic .exe, you can click on it and run a program. So you, your program is executed. And you have dynamically or dynamic link libraries, DLLs, that are generated from class library projects. So projects that are class libraries when compiled will generate DLLs that can be referenced uh, from other DLLs or .exes, right? So 
these are these are executables and this is what we call assemblies so these projects that i've been referring to we can hold many of these projects in a kind of structured uh, folder called a solution so when you have a solution it's basically linking a bunch of projects together so it's easier to work with that's just the basic lingo so in .NET, when you're writing .NET code from either F Sharp, C Sharp, or VB.NET, when it's compiled by their compiler, which are not the same, so they don't have the same compiler. Like for example, the F Sharp compiler is written in F Sharp. Um, when it's compiled, it will generate intermediate language, and it's called Microsoft Intermediate Language. So it's MSIL, and all of these language compile down to that. And how it's executed. So what, what is intermediate language? So it's kind of a term. So you'd be expecting it be a uh, native language or, or native uh, machine code, like binary. So, you know, if we go back and I want to be like this video to be as beginner friendly as possible. Basically, when you compile a program it, for it to be run by the computer, by the CPU, it needs to be ones and zeros, right? The sequence of instructions to do stuff. Well, in .NET, when you compile your code, it compiles down to intermediate language which is not the same uh, binary. So it is binary code, but it's not the same binary as uh, native machine code compiled like from a C program or a native compiler. It is managed code, right? So it's managed binary and it's executed by the .NET runtime. So there's many different types of, uh, many different types of .NET runtimes. And this is what ultimately executes your your assembly code, your .exes and your .dlls. And they defer, it's very important to note, they're not the same thing as DLLs and .exes from a C or C++ uh, languages. These are, uh, the, these languages compile to native code that you know, they compile ahead of time and are ready to be executed by your targeted machine at all times. And while .NET, when you write language, uh, you, you write your code and you compile, is not ready to be run by the machine. It's rather run by the runtime and the runtime compiles it down to native code just in time. So it's called a just in time compiler. And that's basically, so it takes your binary and converts it to your machine's readable binary and then runs the code. That's how it works. And maybe you don't need to know that, but you just need to know the difference of, of what you're dealing with and what is .NET. So I feel it's kind of necessary, even though you're a complete beginner, uh, you know how it works. And why .NET is cross-platform in not all cases, and we'll get into the differences between like .NET Framework and .NET Core, but the your .NET code can run wherever there is an implementation of a .NET runtime. So it runs on Windows, it runs on Linux because because of .NET Core, we now have a runtime that can run on on Linux and Mac machines, right? So that's a very powerful feature of the language. It's much like Java can run on anything where you can install, you can write a Java JVM. It's basically the same thing. An important thing to note about .NET code is that it is managed. Now, what, is, what does it mean to be managed? It's memory is managed. So that means you don't have to allocate in memory your, your objects and, and your data. So when you knew something, you don't have to deallocate it necessarily. There's a garbage collector that will collect all the unused references in the heap and you, you don't need to you know delete pointers like in old C++ days. So it is a managed, it's managed code and all that gets handled by the runtime. Now there's obvious exceptions that um, some, uh, some references are not uh, managed by the, the CLR, the, the common, common language runtime or the, the runtime of, uh, of .NET and uh, you'll need to dispose of those with the dispose pattern uh, on .NET. But, uh, you know, easy to learn and stuff. It's very different from the C++ like delete pointers days. So now I'm, I'm speaking of uh, .NET and F Sharp and C Sharp and stuff like that uh, as compiled languages because they are compiled, right? You have a compiler generates assemblies and uh, you have this, this checking and the, this, this process, but you can execute F Sharp and C Sharp via an interactive mode. So a more interpreted mode, much like Python, where Python, you write code and the, the, the Python uh, interprets your code at runtime. Well, you can have that same mechanism in, uh, so, for, so for example, in F Sharp, if you, you can write scripts, so there are .fsx files, use the same 
syntax or, or basically the same syntax as normal F sharp. There's some extra uh, directives you need to use to uh, link your packages. Uh, with F sharp 5, it's a lot simpler. But with these scripts, you don't have to compile them. You can go ahead and do like .NET FSI and run the script and it'll interpret your script. So it'll, much like a Python uh, way of doing and with uh, .NET 5, we have uh, now .NET notebooks or interactive notebooks, I should say. And you can write much like a uh, Jupyter notebook style um, interpreted scripts and notebooks so you can uh, it's like much used in the Python uh, data science world, and that has been uh, added to the .NET ecosystem, so that's pretty cool. Um, I don't have videos on my channel for it for now, but uh, it's something you can check out online. Now, .NET has a past, has a history, has many versions to it, and it can be quite diff confusing for beginners to differentiate what is .NET framework, what is .NET core, .NET standard, .NET 5, .NET this, .NET that. And so it's important to know the difference. Historically, when you'd be working with .NET, you'd be working with .NET Framework. Now, .NET Framework is a Windows-only implementation of .NET. So back in the days, .NET was only for Windows machines. You couldn't do it on Linux. You couldn't on Mac. That's before Mono came about. So Mono, which is you know not normally called .NET Mono, but it's just Mono, is an implementation of .NET on Linux and Mac machines, and also on, on Android, right? So if you're writing Xamarin, you need to have like, um, this Xamarin Mono on the device to, to run your .NET application. So that's one thing to keep in mind. That's .NET Framework, .Mono, and now since like a few years back, I'm not sure when it, when it came into about, but now there's .NET Core. Now .NET Core is a new cross-platform implementation of .NET. So it runs on all three platforms. It runs on Windows and runs on Linux and runs on Mac. But there's a problem here. Let's say you wanted to write something that you could use on .NET Core and .NET Framework. Well, typically that was not possible because uh, .NET Core is a, a, is, is a very different thing from .NET Framework. They're both implementations of .NET but you cannot share code between the two because if you wrote the code in .NET Framework, you can use it in .NET Core and vice versa. So there are .NET Standard projects and .NET Standard, what it is, is a, a method of writing class libraries that can be used in both .NET Core and .NET Framework. So you think about it as an interface and the .NET Framework and .NET Core were two implementations. That's one thing to keep in mind. But this was very confusing, right? There's uh, many problems with this uh, implementation details, which I'm not going to go into. But this created .NET 5. So the newest version of .NET consolidates everything, right? It, it, it consolidates all the platforms. So right now, if you want to write code that runs everywhere, you write it on .NET 5, which is a new consolidated version of .NET. Now, obviously, this still doesn't include uh, some platforms like uh, Android and iOS, that's going to come in .NET 6, but you can, though, for those, you can write a, uh, run your code on Mono, so that's, that's fine. So that, that still works, and that doesn't, you can still write .NET 5 code everywhere, it's just, you'll need an extra runtime for, you'll still, you'll still need Mono and uh, for, um, for your mobile devices, so that's one thing to keep in mind. So another tool available to you, as I mentioned uh, in the beginning, is NuGet. So NuGet is the package manager for .NET, much like NPM for, for JavaScript or PIP for Python. Uh, this is how you download modules uh, or extra packages, DLLs, from other sources that other people have made. And uh, you can integrate them into your project. And likewise, you can pack your own packages and deploy them on the NuGet feed to share them with other people. And all these services, right, the, the, the compilation, NuGet, uh, testing stuff, uh, is all accessible to you via the .NET CLI. So the command line interface called dotnet.net, uh, that is a .NET, well, it's .NET Core or .NET 5, depending on which version you're on. But this is how you're going to access the build, the running, testing, the, the NuGets, and all that stuff. That's how you're going to, or additional tools, because on .NET, on the CLI, you can install new tools uh, to do other different stuff. Uh, I'm not going to get into that, but quickly with you, I'm going to run over the most basic commands you need on the .NET CLI. 
Now to create new projects and solutions, you can go ahead and do .NET new. That will give you a list of all the templates you have available to you. You can always get more templates. So if you haven't like, uh, uh, let's say you want to do some Xamarin. So you might find online a template for some Xamarin. You can do .NET new and whatever the commands that lets that website will tell you to install. It'll install it and create this new template that you can generate and uh, it'll make it very easier to get started on a certain task. So these are templates with the .NET new command. You have .NET build, which will compile your code, right? .NET run, which will compile your code and run your uh, console application. You have .NET tests to execute your tests. And then there are, there are other new get related options like .NET add, remove, and list to add, remove, and list your dependencies for let's say again project or solution. And you have .NET NuGet to configure your NuGet feeds and stuff like that. So uh, there's great documentation online obviously, but I'm just giving you like the 80% of what you're gonna use most of the time. These are the main commands. So if I were to summarize, .NET is a great platform to build software. Basically, it's a platform to, it's a implementation of a tool set and platform to develop software that is cross-platform, very fast, very efficient. You have the choice of, you know, two main languages and a third one. Let's, let's be honest. You, you're writing F sharp, which is functional first, multi paradigm, and you have uh, C sharp, which is object oriented first, multi paradigm. Because you can do functional with that one, you can do object oriented with F sharp, and then there's VB.net for a more like uh, you know Excel side stuff. Or I, to be honest, I don't know what people write Visual Basic stuff in. Uh, but in any case, .NET is a great place to be with massive investment from Microsoft. Uh, .NET 6 is going to be amazing. And yeah, it's from here to stay, to be honest. The performance is really good and stuff. So hopefully this helps you get an idea of what .NET is. Hopefully it's less abstract. Uh, not, not people just like throwing .NET here and there. I have a getting started video on my channel if you want to get started with the .NET SDK. And I have a full fundamentals uh, video on F Sharp if you want to check that out if you need to. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Make sure to give me a like if you enjoyed it. Comment down below if you have any questions or clarifications and subscribe for more videos. I'm currently building a massive uh, project out on F -sharp, in F -sharp, and I'm sharing that with everyone. And other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in that next video. Peace.